They say less is more. Well, that's what we'll be hoping of this new Aston Martin DB11, because for the first time in nearly 50 years, there's a V8 under there, not just any V8. In another milestone moment, Aston's relationship with Mercedes-AMG has provided this potent 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8 that Aston says delivers the right level of performance along with that unique Aston exhaust note. There are a couple of changes outside too. These bonnet mesh vents, for instance, there are two on the V8 as opposed to four on the V12. And my favourite bit, the headlight bezels are now darker as opposed to the clear version of the V12. So it's all a little bit angrier up front. And that's what I really like about this car. So why don't we put it to the test, shall we? And see how the V8 differs from the V12 dynamically up there in the foothills of the Pyrenees. And we'll have a bit of fun along the way too. You know, you've got to wonder why Aston would even bother with this V8 model, given that in markets like Australia, there's only 27 grand difference between it and the V12. But in markets like China and Singapore, the differences can be up to $100,000. So then it starts to make sense. But, you know, it's a lot more than that. It's a very, very different driving experience. A hundred and fifteen kilos less mass up there and that means better turn-in response, better dynamics overall. This thing feels a lot sharper than the V12 and you know I, I didn't think that would be the case but boy you can really feel it particularly on turn-in such as this. Just absolutely brilliant. And what about that steering? Well if ever a company got the steering weight right for a performance vehicle, this is it. Um, it, it, it is perfect, I, I, I can't fault it. There's just enough weight, weights up in the corners, and it's quick. You know, it just, it'll go around there, there's no understeer. This might be an AMG sourced twin turbo V8, but trust me, Aston have tweaked everything. There's a new shallower sump, and there's a new air intake so that the engine can sit lower in the engine bay. And again, you can really feel that from the get-go because it's just so responsive on turn-in. I, I, I can't say that enough. And best of all, it just invites you to push on harder and harder as you go. There's just so much front-end grip. I've got to put that down to all the tweaks that Aston have built into this, what is a large GT car. Absolutely loving this. And thankfully, they've Astonized the exhaust system because I tell you what, on the way over here, I was petrified that this engine, this, this four litre twin turbo V8 from Mercedes AMG was gonna sound like an AMG C63. But thankfully, not. This is all Aston. It's guttural, and what I love about it, it's a dirty sound. You can, you know, it's so dirty. Let me drop it down a couple of gears. I mean, that crackle on the overrun. You would never pick that as an AMG sourced engine. Just no way. And there's just no lag. You can sit in third as we are all day long and absolutely nail it out of the corners. You know, in going with this AMG sourced V8, I thought they might have gone for a dual clutch transmission, but no, they've stuck with that super smooth eight-speed ZF gearbox and there's no complaints whatsoever because the, the shifts are direct, they're fast, and better still, they're smooth. And surely that's what you want in a, in a GT car. So what about the ride? Has the V8 done anything to hamper uh, the really compliant ride that the, the V12 had when we drove this car about a year ago? Well, no. If anything, 
um, I think it actually rides better. It just soaks up every bump. And I don't mean on great roads because we're on coarse chip now. We've driven over broken coarse chip road at the edges. And again, it just soaks it up. It never crashes. So, you know, I'd have to say they've done an, an amazing job retuning the dampers and there's been a slight change in, in bushes uh, to give it some extra lateral handling, if you like, so that we can really push into those corners. That four litre twin turbo V8 engine, when you unleash it, you get 375 kilowatts and 675 newton metres of torque meaning naught to 100 in four seconds flat. And that's only one tenth off the pace of the V12. You know, I really did have some genuine fears about this V8 DB11. You know, would it deliver that inherent Aston experience as opposed to the V12? Well, those fears have been well and truly put to bed. This is the complete package. In fact, I would buy this over the V12. In fact, all enthusiasts should buy the V8 DB11, leave the V12 for the gentleman drivers and those country club members, because this one is the car that provides the more dynamic driving experience.